السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى. خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم وَمَن يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا ونعم أجر العاملين صدق الله العظيم. As most of you are aware that we are in the month of Shaaban. In fact, one third of this month is also gone. Only about twenty more days now for the month of Ramadan. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. As it is well known about him. That his whole life was ibadah. And in addition to all the work that he was doing during the daytime to, for inviting people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching people the deen, teaching people Quran and the sunnah, we know that his nights were always in ibadah. But as the month of Sha'ban would come in, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ibadah would always increase. In fact, his ibadah would increase in the month of Rajab. As soon as he would see the hilal of the month of Rajab, he used to make this dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa ballighna Ramadan. Ya Allah, Give, our, give us barakah and blessing in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban. And give us opportunity to witness the month of Ramadan. He is waiting for Ramadan as soon as he would see the month of uh, the Hilal for the month of Rajab. If we look at our situation at this time, we may not have planned anything for Ramadan yet. And planning simply means, if we look at our ibadah, there is no difference. It's the same as it was throughout the year. There is no change in it. Did our time for recitation of Quran increase? Did we start doing some nawafil to get ready for the month of Ramadan? Have we fasted even a single day as a preparation for Ramadan? These are the ibadahs that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to perform during the month of Sha'ban as a preparation for Ramadan. In fact, in reality, if the question comes to our mind, what should we do during the month of Sha'ban? Whatever we want to do in Ramadan, we should do it in the month of Sha'ban. If we start it now, 
we will be able to do it properly in the month of Ramadan. And if we don't do anything at this time and wait until the month of Ramadan would come and we hear the announcement about Ramadan, then we'll start thinking and planning and preparing. And we know our situation every year is the same thing. By the time we are just planning, the month of Ramadan is over. And most of the time, our hopes are really, shaitan increases our hopes so much. The person gets nothing in Ramadan except hopes. This Ramadan, I want to do this. I want to do this every day. This Ramadan, I will recite 15 Jews of Quran every day. I will perform 20 rakahs every night. I would be doing Salat al-Tahajjud for at least two hours. I would do these tasbihat and these askar and this. And every day the person is just increasing his hopes. Every day we are thinking that tomorrow I will do this and I will do more than what I'm thinking about doing today. And we feel so good about ourselves that mashallah, you know, this is what I'm planning to do for Ramadan. This Ramadan I will be doing this and this will be the best Ramadan. And then as Ramadan comes still, the hopes are even higher. And this is all shaitan playing games with us. He does not tell us, don't do it. Otherwise the person would feel bad about himself that, how come I'm feeling that I don't want to use the month of Ramadan? No. In fact, shaitan himself will bring some good ideas to us. You know, you should do this and this also during month of Ramadan. But think about it. Keep on thinking about doing this. And our hopes are day by day, hopes are increasing and we are feeling better about ourselves. That in, now Ramadan came in, last 10 days, that said, I will do everything. I will not sleep and at nights. I will do this ibadah and I will recite this much. And it's nothing but hopes. If we really want to do something during the month of Ramadan, now is the time we should start doing something of it now. Get ourselves, our nafs used to these things. At this time, we are forcing ourselves just to do the fara'id. And if we can do the fara'id, alhamdulillah, we are doing very good with our deen. Of course, if this continues, as the month of Ramadan would come, it won't be easy for us, for us all of a sudden to stat 20 rakahs, 30 rakahs, and 40 rakahs. Yes, during the, it's a blessed month of Ramadan, and there is a, so many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that through those blessings we come to the masajid, and we stand in the salah, in the jama'ah, and we are doing salah, with salat al-taraweeh, mashallah. This is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as soon as we leave this gathering, the effect goes away. And now we are just sitting home and normal train, normal things, normal schedules, nothing changed. The few things that we increase in our ibadah, hopefully inshallah it will bring us the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, there is a big fear that after doing this, we get satisfied and we go back and keep on committing all the sins that we normally commit throughout the year. And that will just take away all the rewards that we are acquiring in our salah and through our fastings. <coughs> so it's not just a matter of bringing few changes. It's a matter of bringing deen, iman into the life. We want the month of Ramadan to be the type of month where the iman, this deen would just come into the life. Whatever we do during those days of Ramadan, 30 days of Ramadan, not Throughout the year of Inshallah, Allah bless us to continue after that. But this time, at least we should plan that those 30 days, I want to do everything and whatever I do, I would like that to be in accordance with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing that will be sin, nothing that will be disobedience, nothing that is haram in this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we like to get of the month of Ramadan that our lives are molded 
in this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Sibghat Allah. Sibghat, color. It's the color of Allah, which means this deen, when a person follows the deen, this is the color that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everyone to be painted with. This should be everyone's color. Just like you look at a wall, and right away you can say that this is a white wall. This is the color of it. This is a green wall. As soon as a person would see a believer, this should be the color of a believer that by looking at the person, everyone could say this has to be a follower of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sibghat Allah. It's the color of Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ sibgha. Whose color will be better than the color of Allah, which means coloring, coloring ourselves according to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as soon as anyone looks at us, right away he can say that he has to be a believer. This person cannot be a disbeliever. Subhanallah, if there is a difference between the makes of the cars, as soon as you look at the car, you know the make of the car. There is such a big difference there. Imagine how much difference has to be between a person who has Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person who has no Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we have to come out and explain to people and convince people that I have Iman in my heart? Subhanallah, that color is not there. The color is both. And this color will come through the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when people will look at our eyes, they can see this person, these eyes cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When every other eye in the world is crying for their what? For the loss of their families and whatever else they may lose and they cry for that, we cry for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cry because of disconnecting ourselves from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. People cry because their loved ones are upset with them and they can't do anything. This person can't do anything at his workplace today. He's so disturbed. The person doesn't feel like eating, doesn't feel like drinking, can't even sleep. What happened? The loved ones are upset. Subhanallah. We all claim the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then every day we are doing so many things to upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, still we are sleeping at peace. Not a worry there. Not even once a person wakes up during the night time and says, Astaghfirullah. Ya Allah, I'm very sorry. So month of Shaban is a month to prepare for the month of Ramadan. In reality, preparation is not the food. And when it comes to deen, a lot of us, we do feel that we prepare for the month of Ramadan. In Sha'ban, yes, I'm preparing for Ramadan. What are the preparations? I'm making my plans, which means big hopes in the mind. That's all. There are so many hopes in there. Did I increase even two rakah of nafil in my ibadah? No, not even two rakahs. And this shows that shaitan is just playing these games with us. Just to keep on giving us hopes and hopes and hopes and there is nothing beside hopes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this about previous nations. The same game shaitan had played with the previous nations also. That their deen was nothing but hopes. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nothing depends on your hopes or the hopes of the people of book. Shaitan is giving them hopes and giving you big hopes too. But nothing happens just because of these hopes. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ It's not just hopes. مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ If you commit sins, you will pay for it. Hopes are so big. I will do this, I will do this. And on the other hand, the person is committing sins. So sins are actions, is not just plans. And ibadah is only hopes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are not going to get anything for these hopes, you will have to pay for the sins that you are committing. And the whole deen at the end, if we look at it, is nothing but hopes. So we need to start with something 
during this month, during the month of Sha'ban. And this is of course something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us. Is a practical lesson that he left for the ummah. That during the month of Sha'ban, he used to fast so much. In fact, Aisha radiallahu anha says, that with the exception of few days of Sha'ban, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mostly would fast the whole month of Sha'ban. And he never fasted any other time of the year as much as he fast, he would fast during the month of Sha'ban. Except of course he would intentionally miss few days of Sha'ban because he wanted to keep a distinction between the Fard and Nafil. Otherwise, if you fast the whole month of Shaban, then people will start fasting the Ummah. Some people in the Ummah may start fasting two months, considering this also part of the continuation of the fasting of Ramadan. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for that purpose, he used to miss few days of Shaban. But most of the Shaban, he would be fasting. And of course, this is something that we all can experience it ourselves. If we stand with something during the month of Sha'ban, inshallah it will increase during the month of Ramadan. Stack two rak'ah nafil, it will increase during the month of Ramadan. But if we don't do anything at this time, during the month of Ramadan, it will be extremely difficult for us. We may do few things, but it will be very difficult. We need to start smoothening our way, making our way to be able to perform the ibadah during the month of Ramadan. Very important, extremely important that we make our schedules for Ramadan. And we know what we are doing during the month of Ramadan, what type of ibadah we would like to perform, and then we start performing these ibadahs. May even be very little of it. During the month of Ramadan, I'm sure every believer, every mu'min plans to recite a lot of Quran. What does a lot mean? Of course, it depends from person to person. For some people, a lot of Qur'an means the person will finish one Qur'an throughout the month of Ramadan. For some people, maybe even less than that, recite 15 just throughout the month of Ramadan. And at the end, they may feel that I recited a lot this year. Because last year, they did not even recite 15 just. But we find people like Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, who would finish two Qur'an, who would finish two Qur'an every day during the month of Ramadan. By the end of Ramadan, he had finished 60 Qur'an. And there were many other scholars who would do the same. So Allah depends from person to person. Whatever that is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to keep on increasing our ibadah. But nonetheless, at least we should plan to finish one Qur'an, if not more than that. We should plan to finish at least one Qur'an during the month of Ramadan. <coughs> and of course, this is the least. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open those doors of the rahmah for us that he opened for the people of the scholars of the past, and we compete with Imam Shafi rahimahullah, never knows, we compete with Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, very same situation with Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of his rahmah and mercy, inshallah, we can do that also. Because those were the servants of Allah and we are the servants of Allah. There is nothing that we can say they were able to do it because of they were very special people. No, inshallah, we are the same thing. We are the servants of Allah. They got the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we get the tawfiq, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not me and you. It's not our abilities. It's the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So month of Sha'ban. Is the time when we need to start whatever we want to do for the month of Ramadan, we should start doing it now. And especially Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many of their hadiths mentioned the virtues of the 15th of Sha'ban. There is hadith in, Sunnah, in Muslim Ahmad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yanzuru ila khalqihi fi laylatin nasf min Sha'ban. On the 15th night of Sha'ban, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his mercy on human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all people except two types of people who do not get the forgiveness of Allah. Number one, mushrik, a person who associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
And as we know that the word shirk is used for shirk and kufr in Quran and hadith many times. So mushrik, which means a person who disbelieves in Allah, who has no iman, or a person who associates partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, a mushahin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a person who carries grudge against others will not get the forgiveness during this very important time of the forgiveness. It's a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his rahmah and forgives people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this type of person, of course, a person who's out of iman is out of iman. But the second person, mushahin, a person who carries grudge against others, will not get the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know our situation. It's so difficult, it's so difficult nowadays to keep our hearts clean and pure. Even when we start talking good about someone, right away a feeling comes that you want to say something else also about this person and you want to say something that would make people know that, okay, he is not as good as you think. This is why Imam Ghazali rahimahullah suggests that don't even talk good about people. Because when you talk good about people, maybe someone who would say, yeah, yeah, I know. That's it. This is enough to ruin all the reward of saying anything good about the person if there was any reward in it. If the intention was good. When someone is saying something good about someone, and we even say, okay, I know it. Don't tell me anything about it. Even this is considered to be ghibah. This is also considered to be ghibah. Part of backbiting the person, which means you already, one way or other, you told the people that there is, he's not what you think. Except if there is reality in it, where you don't say anything bad against the person, but you tell the person, Okay, hopefully, inshallah, this is good, but there are other things also that's different. But just to get our grudge out, just to show our feelings and there is hatred in the heart. And you know, every situation that comes up, we find that there is some hatred over here. Amazing. Parents and children, even with them, between themselves, they have feelings against each other. Teachers and students. It was a relationship when it came, you look at it from the Islamic point of view, it was a type of relationship where people could not even imagine students having any feeling against their teachers. And nowadays, it's almost impossible for students to even admi admire their teachers. They would like to get it for themselves. Even some time when we admire our teachers, the purpose is so that people would know how great I am that I'm a student of such a great teacher. So it's not admiring him, really admiring my soul. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the person who carries grudge against others will not get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even during the 15th night of Sha'ban, during the month of, uh, during this plus month of Sha'ban. What is the way of purifying our hearts, cleaning our hearts, making sure there is nothing in there? Number one, the first thing we have to do is, any person that we feel that we carry hatred against those people, we don't like those people. Whatever we have in our hearts, then maybe shaitan will tell us some Islamic reasons for that. You know, you dislike this person because he's a sinner, he's bad, he does this. Uh, it's not my personal thing. It's only because this person is bad. So number one, we have to realize we are bad too. We are not the best people in the world. We commit sins too. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would hate us because of my our sins? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows more of my sins than I know about this person's sins. And if I really care about this person, and I really care about deen, then my deen does not teach me that I should hate the person if I see this person doing something wrong. In fact, I should go back and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I don't have the guts to go and talk to this person. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, this person is involved in all of these sins. He's leading himself to Jahannam. Ya Allah, please guide him to the straight path. There is no reason of carrying any hatred in there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised Anas radiallahu anhu the hadith in Sunan al-Tirmizi. Oh my son, 
إن قدرت أن تصبح وتمسي وليس في قلبك غش لأحد ففعل Every morning and evening look into your heart make sure you carry no hard feelings against any person يا بني وذلك من سنتي Oh my son this is my way too I make sure I don't carry no hard feelings against no one and a person who loves me he loves my sunnah and a one who, the person who loves my sunnah and loves me he will be with me in Jannah So we need to clean our hearts. Instead making dua for the ones that we feel they are bad and we have any hard feelings against them. Number two, there may be some people that we really hate them. We don't like them. Maybe a good thing, give them a small gift. It will be extremely difficult. Your heart will cry. In fact, you would feel that you are cutting your own heart. I'm giving this person a gift. Regardless of what feeling you go through, we need to clean it here before it's too late and we have to get it clean over there with Billah, the fire of Jahannam. Give that person a small gift. Make dua for the person. Inshallah, by doing this, gradually that feeling will go away. And especially if we have these type of feelings against our elders, against our parents, against our teachers, against people of deen, this will become very dangerous and we should always make dua for them and clean our hearts so that we get the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean and purify our hearts. These hearts really, there is no need, there is no reason of filling this filth in our hearts and carrying grudge and hatred and dislikeness for others. There is no need for it because there are so many other things that we have to deal with. Let's not fill our hearts with these things and keep them just clean from these type of things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearts clean. Give us tawfiq to prepare for the month of Ramadan. And be able to receive the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever tawfiq we get, use that tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'il al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alayhi.